What it do, YouTube? I'm back with another video. Y'all new to this channel, man? Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, share, comment. Get notified when I drop these videos. Today is a reaction video to Tommy Davidson. Man, he's speaking his mind, man. So we definitely um, gonna listen. Let's hear what he got to say. I never knew that some of them would stop talking to me when they got to that point. Oh, man. See? Sorry. So I never knew that. Because I was always curious. Right. Yeah. How you did it, man. Tommy Davidson, the charismatic comedian, has built a reputation for fearlessly uncovering the untold stories of his fellow comedians, A-list celebrities, and other notable figures. With an uncanny ability to shed light on the secrets and behind-the-scenes escapades of the entertainment world, Davidson has captivated audiences with his candid revelations. It got to that point where I had to do something, you know, and, you know, life circumstances will come along. This is what I've learned. I'm telling you, this is retro. However, this penchant for exposing the unfiltered truths has seemingly created a backlash, causing a significant number of high-profile personalities to think twice before partnering with him in the future. I never knew that some of them would stop talking to me when they got to that point. Now, one individual who has also undoubtedly encountered the less glamorous side of Hollywood, where fellow actors reportedly engage in blacklisting, is none other than the iconic Mel Gibson. The Hollywood heavyweight has not shied away from addressing the industry's shadowy underbelly, revealing how it's a place where the facade of camaraderie and congeniality often crumbles when the lights are turned off and the cameras stop rolling. Mel Gibson has, on more than one occasion, candidly discussed the stark contrast between the glitzy, picture-perfect image of Tinseltown and and the less savory reality lurking beneath the surface. He has emphasized how in the world of showbiz, often put on a front in front of cameras, at meetings, events, and parties, projecting an image of unity and professionalism. However, beneath that polished veneer, there exists a darker side, where alliances are forged and broken with a certain ruthlessness. Weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and, and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at him. And, mm -hmm. and, they tell you don't go out of the house on the hill. Yes, guys, all this allegedly happens in Hollywood, right under our noses. Anyway, you might be wondering about the explosive revelations <laughs> made by Tommy Davidson and the ensuing reactions from those to the spotlight. So let's dive into the saga from the very beginning. Starting out in stand-up in the 1980s, Tommy Davidson's high energy and unique ability to imitate well-known entertainers Al Jarreau, Rick James, and Prince helped form the foundation for a career that has spanned almost 40 years across movies, television, and comedy. Those who have heard Davidson's sharp quips or watched any of his hilarious movies might be surprised to learn that his early life wasn't so joyful. Abandoned at just 18 months old, the in-living color alum was adopted by a white couple and would live in three different states before settling into the DMV. Although he was a part of an interracial adoption, the black dynamite actor did not understand race until his family landed in Washington, D.C. Smack dab in the middle of the 1968 riots sparked by the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. King Jr., he revealed, I never thought of my parents as white. I didn't know what white was. What I knew was love. I knew friendship, honesty. I didn't know anything about black and white. The realities of race hit Davidson in the face in his new home, and being black grew to be a larger part of his identity. Comedy was also a signature piece of his identity, and even back in first grade, the D.C. native recalls his school principal referring to him as a comedian. But he was more than just a class clown. Making people laugh came naturally. He revealed, my my talent is God-given, and that gift has taken me so many places and given me a chance to use my talents in different places. That natural gift would catapult Davidson to superstardom. After winning an amateur stand-up show at the famous Apollo Theater, the actor relocated to Los Angeles where he got his big break. Davidson even lived in the same building as fellow comedian Martin Lawrence and performed at Luther Vandross and Anita Baker shows. In 19... Claim your 190, there were no majority black sketch comedy shows. So when the first family of black comedy, the Wyans, debuted in living color, the world paid attention. The landmark show launched the careers of actors Jim Carrey, David Allen Greer, Jennifer Lopez, and Rosie Perez, along with Davidson. Appearing on a network television show was big time for any comedian, and the usually confident stage entertainer was shocked by his own success. Davidson shared, the first time I got on camera, I froze because the reality hit me. I had been working all those years, and I was finally on TV. The show was a springboard for other opportunities, like star roles in classic movies such as Woo and Booty Call. So you want to dance? 
It's too late now. However, while he was making America laugh every week, Tommy Davidson was struggling with a serious addiction. I don't make no excuses for nothing. It was just I had a problem, man. And it took me out. And if it wasn't for me having good people around me, I'd be where Elvis Presley is, John Belushi is, Chris Farley. I'm grateful. I don't even trip, he said before adding, people would sit me down and say, don't you do that. And it wasn't a conscious decision. It was just one of them things where there was a lot of opportunities available to me. And I was in an emotional space where I was dependent on those things to help me deal with the present reality. He admitted that Keenan Ivory Wyans, the creator of In Living Color, along with others, pulled him to the side to urge him to get help. After he left for a time, Davidson did return to the show, but the cast had made a few changes while he was gone. He said there was, quote unquote, a lack of quality to the show at that point, and that he missed the friendship he'd formed. In addition to all this, Davidson also revealed that some of his former co-stars had allegedly blacklisted him after he refused to go by their demands. And one such person, according to Tommy, was Jamie Foxx. In an interview with Vlad TV, comedian Tommy Davis shared some <coughs> candid insights into his past experiences working with the multifaceted entertainer, Jamie Foxx. While many have celebrated the duo's comedic chemistry over the years, Davis revealed a previously unexplored, darker side of their relationship. He kicked off the interview by recounting the early days of his collaboration with Jamie Foxx. He revealed that their working relationship wasn't always smooth, and the initial signs of discord became evident during their very first skit together. Although Davis clarified that the infamous underwear incident didn't occur during their debut skit, it was nonetheless a testament to the turbulence that marked their collaboration. One of the pivotal moments in their partnership, as mentioned by Davis, was the creation of the Ugly Woman sketch. This sketch would go on to become one of the biggest hits of their show, thanks to Jamie Foxx's charisma and comedic prowess. Davis admitted to feeling gratitude towards Fox for bringing this sketch to life, as it allowed the two to play off each other effectively. The chemistry they shared while working on this sketch was undeniably strong, but it was the moments off script that revealed a darker undertone in their relationship. Davis recounted an incident that would, in retrospect, be one of the defining moments of his time with Jamie Fox. During the Ugly Woman sketch, <laughs> Davis was wearing nothing more than a pair of Speedos as part of his costume. As the scene unfolded, Davis's character was supposed to run from Jamie Fox's character character, a <coughs> and ugly woman. It was in this scene that Jamie Foxx crossed the line, attempting to physically tear off Davis's Speedos in front of the entire crew. Dude grabs the Speedos from behind and <clears throat> tries to rip them off me in front of everybody. What was meant to be a playful and humorous scene took a shocking turn when Jamie Foxx tried to undress Davis forcibly. The moment left Davis feeling humiliated and violated as he recounted the harrowing experience during the interview. In this candid revelation, he made it clear that he held his speedos in place to prevent a potentially embarrassing situation from escalating further. In a shocking twist, he also revealed that for a brief moment, he contemplated physical retaliation. For two seconds, I turned around and I was like, I'm breaking up. Davis's decision not to engage in a physical altercation was a pivotal moment that could have drastically changed the trajectory of their relationship. In the interview, he mentioned the fleeting thought of retaliating, but ultimately opted for restraint. He reasoned that such an altercation would have gone down in history, altering their careers and possibly their personal lives forever. This moment of contemplation underlines the intense pressure and discomfort Davis must have felt during this tumultuous encounter with Jamie Foxx. What's more, in his 2020 memoir, Living in Color, What's Funny About Me, Davidson detailed his experience working with Fox. The proud family star admitted that Fox is talented, yet competitive, and claimed his type of humor was being mercilessly mean. Davidson alleged that Fox learned that bullying and poking fun of him made him score points with In Loving Color creator Keenan Ivory Wyans. Davidson went on to detail another alleged incident that occurred years later when he and Fox once again shared the screen for the 1997 comedy Booty Call. According to Davidson, Fox rejected the idea that he was a supporting actor in the film, with Davidson claiming that Fox was, quote unquote, determined to steal every scene he could. Davidson recalled how one day he was challenged by Fox to play a round of one-on-one -on -one basketball. Davidson claims he was leading nine, zero, and went for a layup before Fox allegedly charged at him. If I had hit my head on the hardtop concrete, that would have been the end of me, he wrote in the book. I was ready to give Jamie some street fighting lessons too, but the crew pulled us off each other and held me back. 
back. Following the release of the book, Davidson had an interview with Page Six, where he revealed that he hasn't heard from his former co-star since he blasted Fox in his book. I haven't actually heard from him, Davidson told Page Six in an interview. The actor said he doesn't consider the comments he made about Fox as shade. I threw some light on this because the book actually was about how my odyssey can help the reader, Davidson said. So I just pointed out all the situations I was in that I was able to eventually transcend. It was really a roadmap for the reader. Not only understand something, but overstand it. In his new interview with Page Six, Davidson also said that he's at peace with Fox's alleged behavior. I did see one of the Wyans brothers the other day, and we love the same. We love the same, Davidson told the outlet. I am learning just to not have to have the world change for me to be happy. Additionally, Davidson has in the past also spoken about the pressure that he and other co-stars went through when working with Jamie. I think the reason we worked so hard to be successful was to keep up with Jamie Foxx, Davidson said. We all played keep up with Jamie. Aside from Jamie, another person that Tommy claims changed after becoming famous was Jennifer Lopez. While appearing in an interview on the Club Shay Shay podcast hosted by Shannon Sharp, Tommy explained how he and JLO had been cool at one point in time. Tommy says that while he was a cast member of the comedic sketch series In Living Color, he, his girlfriend, and Jennifer used to hang out. The 59-year-old explained that as years went past and her career began to take off, the two would see each other in passing and their encounters weren't friendly. He says while at an event nearly 17 years ago, alongside Danny DeVito, he saw Jennifer and that he walked over to say hello to her. He's like, hi. So what's going mm -hmm. on? What's going on? And, you know, just living like, you know, getting some little carrot dip. Now I'm going, you know, what's in that carrot dip? The Mississippi native shared that the same thing happened at a later date, and that though he didn't want to take it personally, he also attempted to avoid her for his own feelings. Tommy says that folks had again urged him to say hello to her, and despite his Betty judgment, he did only to receive the cold shoulder. This isn't the first time Tommy recalled his cold encounter with the singer and actress. According to reports from the Jasmine brand, Tommy spoke about the same interaction while appearing on the Wendy Williams show in 2021. You know what? I thought about that now. I'm sensitive. It just has to do with what I'm used to. When I have a personal relationship with someone and we talk a lot, when I see them again, I pick it up from where it was. I hadn't seen her in a long time, said Tommy. She A, became hugely famous, wonderful actress, does so much. And so I'm looking for that same personal relationship that was there before. And people are just people. It's not about her, it's about me. He went on to recall, we were both at the cracker and cheese table at some function and I was like, girl, oh man, you're blowing up. This is really cool. I got a carrot, I was about to eat the carrot and she was like, yeah, and walked away. I was like, maybe something's wrong with this carrot. However, Davidson isn't the only In Living Color castmate who thought Lopez was on one. Rosie Perez, In Living Color's choreographer for The Fly girls recalled Lopez having diva moments while on the show. Perez spilled tea regarding Lopez's behavior on the show in her 2014 memoir Handbook for an Unpredictable Life. Perez said other dancers warned her about Lopez and how she manipulated her, the wardrobe and the makeup team. The Do the Right Thing star didn't believe them until the second act actress went off on her, screaming and pounding her chest. You pick on me, me and only me, every effing day. I work my A off, deliver, and you keep pushing me aside, treating me like I know I'm good. I'm better than any of these girls. And you know it, Perez alleged Lopez shouted. The irony of JLO's rant was the choreographer reportedly convinced in Living Color creator Keenan Ivory Wayans to hire the Bronx native. Despite their beef and Lopez shading Perez with her stating she wanted to avoid the Rosie Perez type roles, Perez maintained there's no hate for the no me aim singer. Meanwhile, one fan commented on JLo's attitude towards Davidson saying, Tommy still seems hurt that Jennifer dismissed him. It's disgusting how someone can think they're superior than others. Unfortunately, it happens more than not. A second fan added, I never cared much for JLO for some reason, so seeing Mr. Davidson tell this story is not surprising to me at all. Anyway, Davidson also exposed the dark side of Will Smith. Tommy Davidson revealed that he once had a run-in with Will Smith over sharing a kiss with Jada Pinkett Smith. Jada had a love scene with Davidson in the 1998 film Woo, and the Bad Boys actor confronted Davidson about the lip lock. Me and
I'm scared. Had a run in. Davidson recalled. Then David. I didn't find out that for 15 years because he never told me that. See, he came into the trailer and I was sitting down, right? He's standing over me and he's like, I don't appreciate that, man. I don't appreciate that. And I'm like, well, what you talking about? Davidson went on to explain that. Though he was confused about what Smith was upset about, he kept things civil due to the fact he was sitting and Will was hovering over him. Davidson went on to say Smith stood over him, biting his bottom lip as Pinkett Smith cautioned. Davidson said that he repeated repeatedly asked what Smith was upset about to no avail. So just tell me what's up. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know what's up. You know what's up. So finally I just said, this is a small place and people are here. You want, we should talk about it. Davidson went on to say he didn't learn until 15 years later that Smith was upset because of the kissing scene in Woo. The comedian said he found out after he wrote his book, Living in Color, What's Funny About Me? And he speculated about why Smith was mad. The actor called Smith's best friend, Charlie Mack, to ask if it was okay to mention the argument in his book. And Mack told him that the actors gave their permission. Davidson added that the producers of the film wanted the actors to film the kissing scene with without having rehearsed at the last minute, and they had to wing it, which caused multiple uncomfortable takes for the actress. He wrote in the book that the only reason he could think of as to why Smith was upset was the impromptu kissing scene, which Matt confirmed when they spoke. Meanwhile, fans have commented on Will's inappropriate behavior with one particular fan actually blaming Jada for the miscommunication. They said, I absolutely love Tommy Davidson. He's an awesome comedian and amp actor. It's sad that Jada Pinkett Smith didn't fully disclose to Will Smith the nature of the kiss, which was part of a movie. Her non-disclosure was narcissistic and amp childish. I'm just glad that Tommy is okay and amp. No doubt he has a better understanding of who Jada really is. In any case, Davidson's unflinching portrayal of Hollywood as a realm where the facade of unity can crumble at the drop of a hat resonates with many who have faced the harsh realities of the entertainment industry. His willingness to peel back the layers and reveal the less than glamorous truths behind the glitz and glamour has garnered both praise and criticism, but it remains a testament to his commitment to authenticity in a world where appearances can be deceiving. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye. Well, listening, listen there. I like Tommy Davis. I think he's a good actor. I like his movies. Uh, me personally, a lot of people change, man. You know, I don't experience people change. I know people, certain people. I ain't gonna mention their name that got money and they change. You know, a lot of people say money don't change them until they get money and sometimes they do change them. And then there's people that get money and don't change. Man, y'all let me know the comment. Y'all let me know in the comment section, have y'all ever experienced somebody that y'all know got a little bit of fame or got a little bit of money and change? Because I know plenty of people you know, they got a little money or a little fame and change, you know, but hey, it's life. You know, everybody is not built for that, you know. Everybody is not built for fame. Everybody's not built for success. Everybody is not built to when they get certain stuff. Some people just act different, and that's their that's they nature, and that's their character. And those are the type of people you want to stay away from and watch out for. I'm just being honest. Y'all know.